Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer for this YouTube channel, Nonconformist Conscience. As most of you know, but I have quite a few new faces <clears throat> or subscribers. I wish I could see your faces, but new subscribers who have subscribed to this YouTube channel. And so for that, for those who are coming back to watch again, thank you so much. I really appreciate um, that this channel is gaining traction. I love evolutionary astrology. I love being an astrologer. And I really resisted making and creating a YouTube channel years ago. And then I kept having people ask me to do it. And so I finally did. And I guess I could promote more, but I just have been allowing this thing to organically um, unfold. So I just wanted to share my appreciation with all of you. And for those who have been around since the beginning. <clears throat> so before I go into this week, which I was looking at, of course, I like stay up to date on things and I'm always looking at the transits and um whatnot but there was something I missed and I haven't heard anyone talk about it and so I'm excited to share what that is with you all here in a, in a minute but first I wanted to say I um it is now the Scorpio birthday special. If you are a Scorpio, you were born under the sun sign of Scorpio. It is your time to shine. And um, you have until the 20th of November to book a birthday special with me. These tend to fill up. So last month I ended up opening more sessions for people. I don't know if I'll be able to do that Uh because the holidays are coming up and I have kiddos. So if you are a Scorpio and you want a reading with me, you can get a 90-minute reading um, where we meet on Zoom for $75. And I will go over any questions you have about your natal chart. And I will also go over your solar return. So understanding what's going on this next year for you, this next turn around the sun. So there's that. Um so let me talk to you a little bit about this week. I will pull up the chart in a minute because I definitely want to show you guys uh, some stuff. I think a lot of people are talking about the Mars-Pluto opposition, which I am totally going to talk about that too. It's going to perfect on November 1st. And technically, it is opposing Pluto right now, and we're really starting to build into these energies. And so it's important to keep in mind that Pluto and Capricorn is definitely about and has been since 2018. It's like the decimation of structures. It's we look out into the world, Capricorn. I will give you just a, a little blip for those that are new on the archetypal dynamic of Cap. I feel like it gets a bad rep. It really does. Maybe it's because I'm a Capricorn that I'm like, oh, I used to hate being a Capricorn. <laughs> and the more and more I've studied astrology and I've seen and come to understand the natural expression of Capricorn, I've actually really come to love it. Um, So Capricorn deals with the patriarchal man-made human-made don't want to upset men um laws taboos um the ways in which we structure society nations countries it also has to deal with the conditioning of those countries and the laws within them so with capricorn you're looking at religion family society cultural national um political types of conditioning, okay, um, and the structures within them. Capricorn is also about borders. If anything that you can press up against that's a structure, that's Capricorn. Hence, like, my skin is Capricorn. It deals with Capricorn. Um, and there's even, like, things that you can see in someone's chart um, culturally, 
that has to deal with Capricorn and Sagittarius sometimes in their chart because of that. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to get too much into that. I'm thinking about going around the Zodiac and talking to you guys each about the archetype. That way you can understand each one of the archetypes a little bit deeper, but not today. So Capricorn is naturally ruled by Saturn and Saturn in your own natal chart will speak to the underlying conditioning. Same with the 10th house in your chart and wherever Capricorn falls. It will, yeah, it'll speak to the type of conditioning or the learning that you've come into the learned conditioning. That's because there's a natural in conjunct between Gemini and Capricorn. So Capricorn is <clears throat> also where we experience judgment and self-judgment. It is where we can experience judgment by social structures. It's also about the um, gender roles within social structures. Dexter. Sexy. My dog has allergies. I've been helping him. Sorry about that. Anyway, so Capricorn is dealing with even gender roles within social structures. Capricorn is about the need to self-reflect as well. Um, it can also be where people who have a lot of Capricorn or strong Saturnian dynamic or a strong 10th house, oftentimes they experience depression a lot. And it's because they're needing to go into the polarity of Cancer or the Moon or of, oh, all the animals are coming, or the um, fourth house, the need to self-reflect on emotions. That way, depression can, um, can be eased. Capricorn can also be, when one is really depressed, the sense of futility. Capricorn is also so much to deal with the father in the chart or uh, the authority roles in our lives. So a father, or even we look at Capricorn, the authority roles within all various areas of our lives. Um, so therefore it's also about being your own authority, meaning that you can ask and answer your own questions and you can make correct judgment calls. It can also be about being judgmental, which is very different than making a correct judgment call. It's also about wisdom because when we self-reflect into our own emotional dynamics, pulling in that cancer polarity, we can really gain a lot of wisdom from the direct experience of being vulnerable and therefore helping us to look at the past in, and in the present moment, make correct choices for ourselves. It's, it has a discerning quality to it. Um, it's also about where we can feel oppression, oppression of our voices, oppression for being who we are, the color of our skin, our racial, cultural background, our gender. It can also be oppression of our voice within family systems. Um, it can also be about suppression and repression. Um, hence, depression. <laughs> All of the Eschens, I feel like. So whenever Capricorn is naturally expressed, though, that's someone who has the ability to step outside of the status quo of what is their conditioning, what is known, and they are able to be a natural role model. And a natural role model is someone who is structuring their life around natural law and timeless universal principles and values, as opposed to man-made distortions. Anything that's repressed or suppressed is it becomes distorted. Um, so a, a Capricorn person would be self-determined to look within, um, to self-reflect, to hold oneself accountable. They are responsible. They're self-determined um, to keep growing, to gain wisdom. They don't stop. Um, that's why it's the mountain goat. Uh they climb a mountain. They're late bloomers oftentimes because they're having to sift through things that have been repressed or suppressed. Also, it's the sea goat because it's pulling in the goat and also the water-like qualities because Capricorn is a feminine energy. It's a yin energy. It's an internalized energy. That's why we are called to go with it to self-reflect and the tale of the 
water goat is really speaking to that principle of that, of our ability to, to navigate through um, the waters of our emotions, through self-reflecting. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this because Pluto's at 29 degrees and we are going to be talking about this, the sun squaring Pluto today. Saturn and Pisces retrograde ruling this Pluto and the Saturnian, the Saturn Trinity. So Saturn and its planetary south node and north node. And I'm going to get into a little bit of um, some of Venus's aspects that she's making as well um, during this time. So when you are wanting to understand astrology there is a house there is a sign that rules that house and there is a planet that rules that house and sign that is a total archetype they do not they're not interchangeable so it's really important to know that the archetype of that trinity is no different so <clears throat> that's like if I have Mars in the fourth house or in Cancer, um, I'm a bug. And I have, you know, um, Aries on the ascendant. Well, that fourth house is going to have a, that Mars is going to be more like a Cancer, um, Mars, a Mars and Cancer, and it's a double signature, and then it'll pull in the Aries nature of it. If it was a Mars in the third house, it is like a Mars in Gemini. The house comes first. It would be like a Mars in Gemini conditioned by Cancer. So then it's pulling in the archetypes of Gemini, Aries, and Cancer. So it's important to know this. Like I just wanted to teach you guys a little bit about that. That way, when you're looking at charts, just know that the house comes first then the sign on, of the planet, and then whatever is on the house cusp. It's a, a total um, synthesis of that. And that's where people can get a little tripped up. But I just wanted to speak that to you all because we're going to be looking at uh, some of this today for these transits that are going on. So without further ado, let me get into this a little bit. That way I quit yapping. So we have Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is about getting to the bottom of things. It's about when we're looking at it in transit, it's the collective soul. And we can see how on a collective level we're wanting to restructure through dissolving man-made distortions as a way for the collective to restructure its consci consciousness as a whole meaning to evolve that's what it what it means and it's wanting to evolve into more timeless and natural principles okay so i wanted to speak to that and then i want to show you pluto is squaring the sun the sun is ruled by venus in sag Venus is ruled by this Jupiter, so it's pulling that in. And then Venus is also trining this North Node. North Node is ruled by Mars and Cancer, opposing this Pluto. So let me stop this share really quick and speak about this for just a minute. So... <clears throat> This square between Pluto and the sun. So it's pulling in Saturn, the ruler of Pluto retrograde, and also Venus and Sagittarius, the ruler of that sun. The sun is called a first quarter square. That's the phasal relationship that it's in. And a first quarter square is a crisis in action, meaning that there's this an immense amount of pressure for us to act on something. Act on what? Well, it's about 
<clears throat> decimating the structures that have created imbalances on collective and um, personal levels. The sun is shining a light on these kind of shadow aspects, the Plutonian aspects, the underworld, the underbelly. Pluto also, I'm sorry, I love it. I even have it tattooed on me. I love Pluto. I love Scorpio because either it's a place where we absolutely resist or we absolutely go for it because it's either resisting evolution because I feel comfortable, I feel secure in this Capricornian structure because it's what I know and what it's familiar with. Or it's the soul saying, um, wake up, I'm so over this, I want to confront this so a restructuring can occur. So any type of thing in our life that has been um, out of whack, this can really, we have this knowledge of what it is. It's not like this is a new thing. If something's coming up for you right now, my chances are it's because you've been resisting it. And so now it can be this, this sun square to Pluto, a forcing of an action. You need to act now. You've got to, you've got to do something now. And what this does is when we have the courage to act on this with Mars approaching this opposition and perfection to Pluto, it helps us throw off the past the emotional dynamics, because everything that we experience on an emotional human soul level is a pattern of our emotions. And so there's this restructuring wanting to take place. And our emotions get conditioned, Capricorn, by the values, needs, the learning um, that we have had, right? Saturn, Capricorn conditioning. It impacts everything. So if you are someone who's been suppressing your voice or suppressing emotional dynamics, this is a week that it's like confronting. What are you going to do? How are you going to throw off this old dynamic? And the key is to Capricorn, self-reflect. Because when one does so, that Saturn and Pisces retrograde, so a relive, redo, re-experience in order to resolve something, this is where we're called to make a correct judgment, to make a correct choice, as seen as this is also playing with, with Mars, okay? So there's this need to confront these inner limitations and then to create an action. An action in what? Well, yes, creating new emotional patterns, but how? Well, Venus rules the sun, and Venus is in Sagittarius. So it's aligning oneself with what feels authentic. I did that video over the weekend where I talked about the transit of Venus in Sagittarius. So it's pulling this in. And Venus today is also trining the North Node and will continue to train the North Node throughout this week. Um, trining the North Node in Aries ruled by that Mars that is opposing Pluto. So this is about putting into action our truths, what feels authentic in order for the restructuring. And then that sun square to Pluto is the time to act is now. But that trine is a disseminating trine from Venus to the North Node. And a disseminating trine is where we can really gain an understanding we can know exactly what it is that we're needing to do. We it, we intuit it with Sag. And this is also helping us because Venus is ruled by Jupiter and Gemini retrograde, really get to the bottom of this kind of learned junk that's affecting our emotional patterns and the structures and our consciousness and our emotional nature and our relationship to self. It's helping us understand and be confronted with the voices that we've internalized. Again, I talked about this a little bit last week. And so this is where we are called to create action around living more authentically. And on a collective level, what this means, it's about restructuring society and the collective 
with more natural values and principles that are timeless, dissolving the old man-made structures. Meaning that, think about it, a lot of men cannot feel like they are authentic because in order to be authentic, and women rightfully so too, it is there just for a different reason and I will go into this. Um, but a lot of men are conditioned. They've been taught you can express yourself. If you can't express yourself or talk about what's what's going on internally as an emotional being, because you've been taught that boys or men do not do that, that's really hard to go out into the world and be authentic. And so there's a resurgence in men right now. I mean, I, I'm seeing it and I'm so gosh darn happy about it that are getting in touch with their emotions and their own authenticity. For women, it's about not being afraid to, to express their emotions either for fear of being ridiculed or crazy, just as it is for men. It's also women who are able to, um, to embody these gender constructs of men um, being uh able to be outspoken or to um, be creative or to do this or to do that. Women are standing up in their authenticity right now because you can see Pluto and Capricorn. It's this decimation of these old structures, even dealing with gender, social gender roles and norms. And so there is this need to not suppress or repress and to do what feels authentic on an emotional, that is the importance of this on an emotional level to be emotionally authentic because that is where imbalances have been created through the distortion um, that has occurred through the suppression of that which is natural for each one of us think about it I, I implore you to start thinking about the ways in which you were taught whether it be through society your culture school um, family religion the things that you were taught that are actually naturally occurring inside of you that are wrong. It could be your emotions, your ability to be creative, your ability, um, your, your sexual preferences, your sexuality, all of these things, your spirituality. If it's naturally occurring, it's because it's a natural law and it's observable right? And Venus and Sag and this Jupiter um, and Gemini retrograde is wanting us to throw off the old learned distortions um, that are not natural. And so this is a week that can confront us with anything that we've been suppressing that is natural about ourselves. That's not authentic. And so it's calling us to do just that. The other thing I want to show you, the thing that I got all jazzed about that I was like, everyone's talking about this Mars, Pluto opposition. Yeah, we're throwing off old dynamics for sure. I can't believe I didn't see this earlier and I can't believe any, no one else is talking about this. For our whole lifetime. The North Node, just look at your own natal chart or go look up on truenode.com. I'll put a link for it. Look up your North and South Nodes of Saturn and Pluto. They've always been in Cancer and in Capricorn, the South Nodes. South Nodes are still there right now. South Node, Saturn, South Node of Pluto and Cancer. But on the 8th, I did not realize this. On the 8th, the north node of Saturn entered into Leo. That is mind-blowing to me. And I want to talk about this. Let me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to point that out. But I want you to keep in mind, I don't think that this has happened in any of our lifetimes. So you've got Saturn retrograde. In Pisces, the ruler of Pluto and Cap, the south node of Saturn, which is conjunct the south node of Pluto right now, 
So that's in Capricorn. But you've got the North Node of Saturn. Now in Leo, ruled by this sun, square to Pluto. Now let me talk about this. This is um, remarkable to me. So I have told you about Saturn um, and the archetype of Capricorn. I That's why I led with all of this, okay? Saturn's south node in Capricorn speaks to all of these types of, and Pluto south node, by the way, they're conjunct right now. Planetary nodes are so important, especially on a collective level. Even in someone's natal chart, you can do such a deep dive into their prior life dynamics. I don't feel like it's talked about enough. It's why I love pulling the planetary nodes and the asteroids in often. But you can see in that chart with the south node of Saturn conjunct the south node of Pluto and Capricorn that the prior social structures have been these distortions of natural law that have conditioned each one of us on a soul level. We're bringing in conditioning even from prior lifetimes of these dynamics. This happened, well, I'm, I should do a class on that for another time. Actually, I, I did do a class on it. It's called Returning to Natural Law, and I will Put the link in this for you all so if you want to go back and look at it but that speaks to um the virgo pisces sub ages of where this religious kind of um indoctrination and conditioning came in that was suppressive in nature that started to get people to suppress what was natural about them before that it we lived in natural natural times i will say that but those nodes <clears throat> really are indicative of around 6500 bce this turn of going from natural times to more um distorted distortions of nature um women are evil men um want women to be subservient um, killing, rape, wars, all of those things, they used to not occur in natural times. And so these nodes speak to the, the planetary south nodes of Saturn and Pluto speak to these times of, uh, <clears throat> at one point in time, yes, things were structured in a way that was in alignment with natural law. And then there was a shift and Pluto right now at 29 degrees Capricorn um, for the last time in our lifetime, it re-enters Aquarius in November, November 19th, I believe. It is squaring the sun, which is shining a light on how these dynamics of distortion, oppression, repression of what is natural has <clears throat> created social structures that are absolute distortions of natural law. All of us have been impacted by this. Just think about yourself as a woman and what you've experienced and think of yourself as a man and what you've experienced. Now, Saturn ruling Pluto, the south node of Pluto and the south node of Saturn right now. So Saturn ruling that. In Pisces retrograde is we are in a process of really needing to strip away, dissolve Pisces, these distortions in order for a rebirth to occur because Saturn is eventually going to enter Aries, right? Aries comes out of the sign of Pisces. So there is this need to take what is timeless and universal in nature that we, it's a soul calling for each one of us to recover our actual natures right now 
um, and to dissolve these distortions so a new evolutionary cycle can begin personally and collectively. It's also why we're seeing extremes play out in the world. Beings have reached a limit. It takes an extreme to counteract an extreme. That's a Libra dynamic. Libra naturally squares Capricorn. But on the other hand, what I really want to talk about is this north node of Saturn entered Leo on the 8th of October. I can't believe I didn't see it. I know I'm like harping on this, but as an astrologer, I am like, whoa, Leo is about creative actualization. Whenever it's naturally expressed, it's about co-creating with something much larger and it pulls in the polarity of Aquarius, which is co-creation with source, with community, with humanity. And so we are really called to lean into that. And with the North Node of Saturn being ruled by the sun in Libra square to Pluto, it is to act on restructuring and rebalancing as an act of love, Leo, to restructure in love through the natural expression of Libra, which is giving, sharing, and inclusion, co-creating, listening to each other, not saying you're right and I'm wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. It's unity and diversity. And so I am willing to bet over the next couple of weeks, we are going to see some people utterly try to hang on to these old structures and to resist. And then we are absolutely going to see magical acts of love. It's free will at this point, but this really speaks to this is a time where on a collective level our common humanity that truly is rooted in giving sharing and inclusion and natural laws unless you're just an evil person um can really start to take shape and to take place that north node of saturn and leo is now also later on today the sun is going to move into scorpio so on the other hand, it's going to help us get to the bottom of more of the exclusionary dynamics and the distortions of where there have been manipulations and hidden motivations and um, lies, deceit, deception. The misuse of natural resources can really be highlighted as a way for us to get to the bottom of it on a collective level so that a restructuring can occur. It's also up to free will on humanities. Um, it's on, on a humanitarian level, that's a choice. So it's important for each one of us to do our own job and work. And with Saturn, the North Node of Saturn and Leo, um, I want us to remember that when Leo is expressed, it is about co-creation and create just creativity in general. It's about dignity and love. Okay. And so to act in that, if you're wanting to restructure your emotional dynamics, the restructuring is aligning yourself with universal and timeless laws and not distortions that would suppress or be repressive for yourself or for others. It's a time to release that and to really, we all carry this within us. We're, none of us have not experienced this or been conditioned in some type of way. And that square from the sun to Pluto right now is really talking about the need to act on truly dissolving these old structures in order for us to move more into um self-love, self-care, self-respect, um, equality, and self-dignity, self-respect. So if there's something that's being highlighted right now in your life and you're being confronted with it in true Pluto-Scorpionic fashion, 
That is where we get confronted with who we are, who we aren't, and who we absolutely cannot be. So if you are seeing something in yourself and you're like, I cannot be this person, you have a choice. And so there's a need to look and self-reflect into those emotional dynamics to change those patterns of awareness and to wrap up a whole cycle that's probably, not probably, it has been lifetimes in the making of you needing to do this. I know I, it's not for the faint of the heart. I've been doing it as well. It's it's everyone. It touches each one of us. And there is a need for deep self-analysis and self-reflection right now in order to know how to make the correct choices for ourselves. So remembering that Venus is trining this North Node and on a collective level, it's speaking to natural laws and putting them in place to make new choices around that. But on personal levels, it's about recovering each of our individual natures and being authentic to ourselves. And some people are going to continue to evolve with us and some aren't. And we can't control that. This is also about dissolving control. Sometimes in order to be a good leader, it's an act of self-love and love for others to just mirror that. And that's also what the North Node of Leo is indicating. Being a mirror of a natural role model to others so that they see it and they know that it can be done. So it's very important for each one of us to do our personal work right now and to be authentic. So on the 24th, Uranus is going to sextile Mars. Uranus is ruled by Venus and Sag. Mars will be ruled by a Leo moon that is trining the North Node. Mars also rules the North Node. This is where we can really have this higher intelligence come into us on an intuitive level that helps us to propel ourselves forward on this new evolutionary cycle. Um, so trusting your intuition and your gut about how to move forward is really important this week. It is an act of self-love and that act of self-love of trusting oneself, especially if you haven't or you've denied it, right? Because that's a distortion. We're taught not to listen to ourselves. We're taught to listen to authorities. They know better. Even on some level, people are coming and they're listening to me because maybe you think I'm some type of authority. And I'm really hopeful that this is resonating with you. But at the end of the day, you know you better than anyone else. And you know what you can do in order to cultivate new patterns. And that is about being that sovereign. That's that's being a sovereign soul, which is our divine right. That is a natural law. Natural law is where we are able to be intellectual and intuitive. Think about it. All of us have that exist inside of ourselves. So this is the time to fuse that together and to trust yourself and to create the actions that are necessary in order to keep you moving forward, to not resist, even if you're afraid. And then on the 28th, the sun in Scorpio is going to be in conjunct the north node. Again, the ruler of the north node is approaching an opposition to the ruler of the sun, Pluto. So this is a time where I think collectively we could see a bit of crisis this next week or so. Um, but Personally, this is about confronting those inner limitations further and to utilize it as a way to self-improve. It can also be where your will comes up against someone else's will. And so there's a need to just be authentic so that a restructuring can occur. It's also where we're needing to get to the bottom of like, where does abandonment and betrayal and a misuse of power come from? That comes from distortions of natural law. Um, and so this is a time where we're really being confronted with all of these dynamics on 
social collective levels and on an internal level. That way there can be a shift. Everyone's talking about the big shift and how they're excited for it. This is the preparation work before Pluto re-enters Aquarius for the next 20 years. So do your due diligence. I am going to make another video this week. I'm sure I want to dive more into the asteroids that are, are speaking to this, but for this video, I feel like I've already taken so much of your time and I really appreciate it. I got really enthusiastic about this. If you have anything going on in your life or you want to understand these transits, come see me. I would love to explain them to you or um, to validate you and what's going on in your life. And um, I look forward to meeting more of the Scorpios. I'm halfway through my birthday series that I'm my birthday specials that I chose to do this year. I started with Taurus because I didn't have the idea until um, the sun was in Taurus. So we're halfway through. I've been doing this for six months and I'll do it for six more months. And um, it's my way of being able to make this more inclusive for those who might be struggling or can't afford. Um, I try to make my prices as low as possible for me to survive on as well. Um, because I just don't feel like it's fair to, to charge people an arm and a leg right now. Um, I want to make this accessible. I'm about to do um, a class talking about Cassandra again on the Astra channel or the Astra school. Um, you can find that on Instagram. I am trying to think. I'm in the middle of doing my karmic inheritance workshop right now. Once this session is over with, I will start it back up. I am really wanting to do a, a and I've been putting it together, a workshop over um, some of the asteroid goddesses. If you have not subscribed on my uh, website, go subscribe to emails. If you go to like the forecast or whatever. I haven't been writing a lot lately on those because of just time. Um, but if you go subscribe, you'll get a notification of whenever my workshops are coming up and whenever I do do a written report. So I just wanted to put that out there. That way you get notified. Really, the last time I did the workshop for Karmic Inheritance, I just put it on my website. Um, because I only open it to four people and by the end of the day it was filled up. So make sure you subscribe if you're into um, taking workshops or learning more about this. I also want to reiterate that I do tutoring. I love tutoring people. If you're wanting to understand evolutionary astrology, no matter what level that you're at, um, and you you want to deepen your understanding, come see me. I love it. Anyway, I will be back later this week to talk more about some of these energies, but just remember that North Node and Saturn has not happened in any one of our lifetimes. That's It's a big deal. And it's in Leo, and it can either really, we're at a, at a, at a point in time where there's a huge choice to either stay stuck in distortions or as an act of love for community, for God, for source, for humanity, to restructure in love and not suppression or distortions or exclusion, to restructure in timeless and universal natural principles, values, needs, um, so anyway, I want you all to have a beautiful week and I will see you soon. I look forward to more of you all coming to see me.